attention deficit disorder add it is also called adhd that is attention deficit hyperactive disorder it can be defined as a persistent pattern and pervasiveness pervasive core symptoms of inattention hyperactive and impulsive behavior in a child in more severe form than expected in children of that age and same level of development so simply we can say persistent pattern of pervasive symptoms like three inattention hyperactiveness and impulsive behavior these three should be there to call it as add or adhd is usually diagnosed by the age of 7 years and along with the significant levels of inattention we need to have hyperactivity and impulsivity in at least two settings and also there should be interference with developmentally appropriate activities or functions like uh, social functions academics and extra curricular activities at the school levels it's more common in boys than the girls that is ratio is 2 is to 1 the causes can be explained as initially it is a metabolic disorder in the brain in which the genetic factors a key role the genetic factors brain damage neuro factors psychological causes alcohol and tobacco in pregnancy that is used by mother premature deliveries lbw that is low birth weight babies below 2.5 kg at the time of delivery and uh, uh, less uh, prenatal care means uh, the mother is not uh, received the proper care during the pregnancy next environmental factors can be lead exposure in pregnancy on the early ages of child means once the mother is exposed to lead means which is commonly there in the pains okay in the pregnancy and also early years of the baby life this also can contribute to add and the psychosocial factors of adhd are impaired family structure uh less exercises too little personal care and attention absence of structured family uh, daily routines or structure, structured family life patterns result of extreme trauma of brain and but research shows that traumatic stress and traumas closely with adhd and they adversely affects the brain's architecture brain structures so this may contribute to these problems moderate abuse and severe neglect by the parents also can contribute to adhd in adolescence especially the family stress and lack of care by the parents in early years of life lack of uh, discipline or controlling over the child all can contribute to adhd the signs and symptoms can be behavioral like aggression excitable irritable hyperactive and lack of restraints impulsiveness forgetting or persistent repetition of words or activities the cognitive symptoms can be absent minded cannot focus cannot pay the attention and for forgetting the things easily etc the mood problems or mood symptoms can be mood swings like anger anxiety boredom excitement depression or disability learning the important irritable uh, symptoms can be the child is so irritable and cannot tolerate the noise or light or temperature etc sleep also disturbed and sometimes there will be intensified crying in the case of children one year or two years uh, such babies we can say or even uh, school age children okay they can't stop the crying explosive and irritable behavior at the school atmosphere emotionally labile and impulsive along with hyperactivity decreased attention leads to problems at school and the both the problems of learning and behavioral coexist in these children all the signs and symptoms affects the cognitive academic and behavioral emotional social functioning of the child or adolescent thus they all will affect the adl adl means activities of daily living normal functions means bathing eating reading studying all these things are called as adl okay activities of daily li- living even this will affect the adl that is the meaning where the child cannot cope up with the normal life the treatment patterns can uh, can be in the mainly focused on three aspects that is, that is uh, child and parent counseling therapy first thing first we have to counsel that the level beginning level is child and parent only then school interventions we have to modify the factors at the school level then medications or drugs so parent and child therapy 
school environment change and medications the signs and symptoms persist into adolescence or adult life and remit at puberty overactivity is to remit first and distractibility is the last so initially we have to what what we have to stop overactivity in the child we have to say make him calm by some means then stopping the distractibility or distracting age of the child the most are prone to anti social behavior substance abuse mood disorders learning problems and these are all affecting the child for lifetime if they are not treated they can be treated without even drugs by improving the brain function and reduction and resolution of the symptoms improved quality of life good child care etc supportive therapy next cbt that is cognitive behavioral therapy anger management therapy counseling the client and counseling the family and family members psycho education uh, all these are helpful in treating the child or adolescent stimulants and uh, cognition enhancing medications and anti hyper uh, tensives while taking the fast acting stimulants non stimulants are also kept as a part of the treatment plan for adhd the stimulants are approved by food and drug uh, administration act or uh, fda and the non stimulants uh, which can be used for children is clonidine and bupropion for adults to make them calm and relaxed the other two aspects of uh, adhd or add can be one thing inattention and uh, disruptive behavior just have a glance at these ones inattention can be forgetting simple things or losing things so the child is unable to follow the given instructions unable to stick to the tasks which need time or like tedious tasks making careless mistakes at school and even the family short attention span easily disturbed and cannot complete the given tasks in time easy moving and carelessness difficulty in sustaining of attention during the task or a play frequent interruption or breaking of ongoing activities or tasks attending the trivial noises which are ignored by others uh, and unable to focus on things the disruptive disruptive behavior or disruptive behavioral disorder dbd okay is also part of adhd this is nothing but a frequent arguing with peers means same as friends okay same as groups adults or others annoys the people angry and resentful blaming others for their own mistakes refusing to obey elders or teachers etc a short temper or losing temper for at simple activities always questioning the rules and uncooperative to others these are due to genetic physical environmental factors and all these are working they will work together to contribute adhd okay then disturbed behavior is due to disruptive behaviors associated with emotional disturbances and problems like aggressiveness anti social behavior inattentiveness distracted impulsiveness impaired social interactions and unable to cope with adl that is activities of daily living and then obsessive repetitive episodes in their lives so these two are again inattention and disruptive behavior aspects of adhd where we have to keep them in our mind thank you